We are bikepacking 2,500 miles across Europe from London to Istanbul. In our last video, we crossed into country number three, Belgium. In this video, we are exploring Ghent before making our way to Brussels, and then we push on to a very memorable host stay near Namur. Good morning, it is the start of day seven. Today is sort of another half day. We're actually gonna be going about 40 miles today, but we won't be starting until the afternoon because we are here in Ghent and we will be exploring some of the sites around here. Then we're off to Brussels. We have no place to stay again. Oh gosh, yeah. We've had a really hard time finding warm shower hosts that are available. We gotta get going. It is probably close to eight, right? Yeah, and we have a ton to see here in Ghent. Ready for it? I sure hope so. Okay, let's go. We're kicking it off with the gorgeous building right outside our window from our hotel, the St. Bath's Cathedral. I think the St. Bath's Cathedral is probably one of the most impressive ones I've seen. Super gorgeous uh, the inside. architecture inside is amazing. You go in there and it's like so the tall. ceilings have to be like at least 100 feet, maybe more. And then right across the way here, guys, is the Belfry. So as I understand it based on my research, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like a thing that some people check off is to try and see all the belfries of Belgium. It's a very beautiful building. Someday maybe we'll, we'll go up there. we passed by a place called Graffiti Strat, so Graffiti Street, and it's just full of graffiti everywhere, and I love street art. But this is like, feels like more like graffiti graffiti than street art. <laughs> I feel like the more we travel, the more we love street art. Now we're gonna head to the castle. Plain waffle. Oh wow. A lot sweeter than I expected. It's really good though. I'm Is that impressed. the sugar crystals? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're outside of Gravenstein Castle, which we've heard from other people we need to pay to go in. It's a preserved 10th century castle, which is crazy, and it has a moat and everything, so excited to go check it out. And I think you can see an armory in there as well. It's like some old torturing elements. Should be interesting. Let's go check it out. The Gravenstein Castle is a medieval castle built in 1180 and was the residence of the Counts of Flanders. The top had epic views of the city. So we learned in the intro that these little holes are used for tossing boiling water on your enemies. So like there's a bunch of booby traps here. There's This was a really cool castle. Definitely worth the 13 euros a person that it cost us. We learned a lot about the history. The audio guide that we had was really funny. This makes me really, really glad that I was, did not live during that time period, just hearing all the different ways that people were tortured or executed. I would not have wanted to live in that time period. Really cool place to check out. Ghent ended up being possibly our favorite town to explore in Belgium, so we were so glad we allowed time to explore it. So we all take on different roles. 
one of Alex's is bike maintenance. Yeah. It's been about a week and we've been through some mud. It seemed like a good time to do a little bit of chain moving. Now we're gonna head out. We got about 40 miles to do today and it's already 120 and it's hot. I think this is the hottest day of our trip so far. It's really hot. I've got all my sleeves on so I don't burn because I hate using sunscreen. Let's get going. By Ghent. My arms are so sore. I don't remember this happening with the divide, but I feel like they might be the sorest. My quads too, but the arms look so sore. So Alex and I just stopped at Town Square and we were needing to fill up. We've been typically using gas stations, but it's been harder to find here. We were kind of arguing about where to go because I feel extremely awkward asking random restaurants to just fill our waters. And this guy came out of the, of the office and he's like, you guys need something. And so then he like took us up to go use the restroom, fill our waters, gave us apples. And then when he heard we're going to Brussels, he's from that area. He's like, oh, I need to tell you what to do there. And so he took us into his office and explained exactly like what we should see there. So the, the pink eye here, um, then... I think he was awesome. I doubt you're ever watching this, Frank, but if you are, kudos to you, you're awesome. <laughs> and now we have a very fun day planned for tomorrow when we go explore Brussels and we have the recommendations from a local, which is super awesome. People have been so nice to us on this trip. Me and Alex have traveled all over the world. Before I, we even started this trip, I had been to 45 countries. For some reason, you being on a bike makes you more vulnerable or something or a little bit different than all the other travelers. And so we've had just so many people help us. Like we've had so much more interaction with locals being on a bike than we ever did during any of our other travels, which is crazy to me. Unless we've like lived in a place. Like I've done some like homestays when I did some work abroad. Like that you can really get you know in touch with the locals. But for some reason when it comes to tourism travel, it seems like this is the way to go if you want to kind of get more immersed. acid build up in my legs. Oh man. Wow. So so That's the most intricate dog park I've ever seen. This is so muddy. What the heck? This is deep, deep mud. Oh, I wish we stayed on the road. Yeah, all mosquitoes are here now. Sorry, a bunch of bugs went up my nose and in my eyes. I had to deal with it. We found the Atomia. Camping 58. This is like my only option for camping. 
the whole place is locked down, like bolted shut. I think it's a homeless encampment. It says it's for travelers. Try to find plan B. It is almost nine o'clock. Here's some chips for substance. Here's a value steak, Vessels Expo. Hi guys, it is after 9.30 now. We have a place, but now we have to go into town for another three or so miles. Four. Four miles. It's 9.30 and it's dark in a city. Fun time. That is crazy. I can't believe that. I am in front of the Atomium right now. We decided to just stop here real quick, even though it's almost 10 o'clock, but it looks like that. <coughs> it's basically a giant sculpture in the shape of an atom, and it's sparkling. Hello, my name is Ayan. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And explain why there's a random kid telling people to subscribe on our channel. Okay, that may have seemed a bit random, but in the previous clip where I was talking about the Atomium, this kid just kind of walked up to me and he's like, can I say hi on your vlog? <laughs> and so we talked to him for a bit. Oh, it's so cool. So even though it was kind of disappointing about the Camping 58 not working. I think it was a happy accident we ended up here at night. This is gorgeous. It reminds me of like, you know like the Eiffel Tower, how it sparkles at night. Like this is one of those things that is cool to see at night because it sparkles. That police officer just sort of give you a big thumbs up too. No. He like cheered me on. He's like, very good, very good. Nice. <laughs> So far, this bike lane is actually really good. Maybe it will be fine biking this way tonight. <laughs> Do you need some help? Oh, you got it. a couple of eggs leaked all over my pannier on the inside. Honestly, we are debating staying an extra day in Brussels to get our life together. We're both feeling like we need a bit of a day off and we also need some time to plan. All right guys, we are in Brussels exploring for the day. We decided to take a full rest day here. We're gonna go to a few places, but one of them is Galay Kingdom of Waffles. It's a liege waffle. And we're gonna give this a go. Mm. The flavor of the thing's real nice. I wish it was crispier though. It's not as crispy as I tend to like mine. But it's good. Entered the grand place and it definitely lives up to its name. It's very impressive as you walk into this giant buildings, beautiful buildings in a square. And there's an elephant. This is where the guy recommended that we go, the guy that we met yesterday, and we're gonna try these Belgian fries. They're supposed to be really good. And we have a couple of different sauces. Liz picked these out. I don't know what they are. One's like garlic mayo, and then this one's andalus. We'll go plain first. Wow. 
it's really good. It needs a little salt, but the, the texture and flavor is very good. So we'll try this sauce. That one's pretty good. Let me try this one. Mm. So this white sauce here, the pita sauce, I thought was the best. But they're both really good. So, really good fry choice. Let's see. I think I'd give them like an eight and a half. It's a very rainy day in Brussels. Yesterday we lost you, we started filming, but then we were just like filmed us eating food and we we're just so tired, we just needed a full rest day. And the crowds were insane too, so we also like could not handle being around that many people. So anyways, this morning we're hoping that the rain and just the fact that it's early in the day will detract some people from coming. So we're gonna go try to hit a bunch of sites real quick before we head off for the day and we cycle to Namur. I can't get over the difference from yesterday afternoon where it was so full of people and now this morning, 8 a.m., no one here at all. It's crazy. So we heard from our Belgian friend that we are supposed to rub his arm for good luck. So that's what we're gonna do and you can see lots of others have done it. Wow, it's so smooth. We are at Mannequin Piss, and because it's early, we're the only ones here. There's so many legends, as I understand it, behind the team boy. I don't think anyone knows for sure what the accurate thing is. One legend is that he, a little boy saved the town from fire by peeing on it or something like that. It's really small. It's much smaller than I had pictured as well. It's, it's less than two feet, I think. Yeah, it's a very small guy, but um, yeah, team boy. We spent the rest of the morning exploring some of the sights around the beautiful streets of Brussels. Liz and I have learned over the years that I think we're, our favorite architecture style is Gothic. We love how on the exterior you have the gargoyles and it's just very intricately like detailed. And then on the inside, it's just these really, really high arches. This one is also one of the top cathedrals I've seen. I think it would be this one, St. Baths, the Cologne Cathedral, and like the, Salt Cathedral. the Salt Cathedral too, which is like oh, yeah. not, it's very different very than any different. of those. <laughs> this is so insane. We don't have much more time. I think we're gonna go try to grab some food, maybe some chocolate if there's time, and then we gotta pack up and hit the road because we got a warm shower host to get to in 46 miles. No, more. no it's only 38. Only 38? Are yeah. Sure that's just a short day. Okay, well, it's gonna be another short biking day. We need to have a hardcore day here soon. <laughs> we will the next day, I think. Oh, okay. just passed through some of the touristy areas that we were earlier today and I'm very glad that we got out early because wow they're already super crowded
Obviously, we're having a very healthy lunch here. <laughs> Past few miles we've been taking the more adventurous route on this gravelly dirt road we've both been kind of craving not being around a bunch of people and a little bit of nature so this is exactly what we needed surprised they have this much nature without people this close to the city I did it again. I left my gloves somewhere. So we decided not to go back for the gloves. Could have been 10 miles almost to go. Unfortunately, I am one gloved. Now that we're moving more inland, we're definitely seeing some more elevation gain especially as we get closer to Luxembourg. There's a mountain range that kind of goes through Luxembourg and the southern part of Belgium. I think over the next several days, we're going to be gaining quite a bit of altitude. Cows seem to be coming towards us. Oh my goodness, look at them. I had to stop to get my chain back on and we saw these cows starting to approach us. I was thinking, this looks very, very familiar. <laughs> if you haven't seen that episode of our Great Divide series, we'll link it up here. This is so weird, they're coming right towards us. Of course, we, us. we do have a fence this time. Hi, Moo Moose. I can see our presence has caused some sort of confusion. So we will go. We bid you adieu. Au revoir. We're definitely back in the country now, passing through fields of corn, wheat, and potatoes. It's nice getting out here and having these big, massive, open fields around us. route is going through this really long cobble stony or brick kind of street and it's honestly it's so bumpy. Oh, I wish I could tell the GPS to avoid this. Just about 1.9 miles left the past 15 miles, it's been very beautiful with all the fields and everything. This is it. Oh, hello. Hello. Your bike is welcome in my garage. Okay. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. I never thought I'd be staying in a yurt in the Belgian countryside. <laughs> But that's what we're doing, guys. Our warm shower host has a yurt in his backyard and we're on a couple cots in the yurt. This has been awesome. We just had a three course dinner with our host here. They made lots of stuff. And then we had dessert. Super nice and they're lovely people. They host people during the season, like they said, one or two times a month. We've had such good experiences with warm showers so far. Yeah. It, it's really enriched the trip because For sure. I feel like often in our travels, we, because we're both introverts, that we can easily not speak to too many people. <laughs> I would encourage any of you guys who are thinking of doing this in the future and you're apprehensive about staying with strangers, give it a try. 
put yourself outside your comfort zone. Like, honestly, I feel like that was one of the things I was most nervous about with this trip. Because, like, I know I can camp. I know I can do those things. Oh, yeah. One thing I just remembered about this yurt, it's it actually is from Kyrgyzstan. He did a trek there, and he brought this back with him. <laughs> yeah. It was so awesome. He played instruments for us too. He's a very good musician. They're just lovely. It was so great. That's it for today, guys, but we will see you in the morning.